as an officer, tell me what happened that night. What, what, what do you understand happened back on, I guess, May 25th? In the early morning hours of May 25th, the officers went to a local business in town that had asked us uh, to remove people from the business if they're hanging out there after hours. And the officers made contact with somebody with that intention. And was this almost a, a, a normal beat stop on a night where they where they just go through there and, and sweep the place? Well, it's not unusual. It's downtown. So it's not unusual. Over the last two years, we've really pushed getting out of your car and, and walking. Um, and so it's not unusual at all to see day shift, swing shift, or graveyard just walking through downtown. And these are graveyard guys? These are two? Correct. Are they in the same car together, or is this? No, we're single cars. OK. Uh, so they were together, at least judging from what I saw, when they approached this stairway, they were together. Had was that just by coincidence, or did they say, let's go there together, you know? Well, it, it could be they go to get together, but it's also routine if I'm going to make contact with somebody that's suspicious that I call for another unit to come over. Okay. Um, did they know someone was at the top of the stairs? I believe one of the officers had identified that he thought somebody was at the top of the stairs, yeah. And I, and I see they say, okay, there's a foot, and they proceed up the stairs. Uh, how How... How did things go from, from there? I guess take us from, from when they're walking up the stairs. Uh, the officers approach up the stairs trying to make contact with the person they see up there. Um, several times they try to make contact with this person over and over to get their attention. Um, and when they get to the top of the stairs, they give more commands to that person. And he was non-compliant, he was asleep. Uh, and I th I saw what, what was there. There wasn't a whole lot of action on his part. Um, and then the pepper spray comes out, correct? Correct. Um, we see what happens there. Then there's an altercation for a couple of minutes. Um, fast forward ahead to this report that came out of Thurston County. Mm -hmm. They say that that pepper spray should not have been used. They, you know, they used words <coughs> like uh, intentionally assaulted, recklessly inflicted. How do you think that that went down? How do I think the Thurston County report? No, or? sorry. How do you think the incident went down with your two officers there and the, and the man? Well, I mean, obviously we have video. And we have reports of the incident um, and accounts of the incident. Um, I think there's really three people that can account for what occurred that night. Um, and only those three can tell you that. As someone who's been in law enforcement for close to 30? Close to 30 years. Do you like the way that that <coughs> transpired that night? Obviously, I don't like the way it transpired that night. Um, kind of puts a knot in your stomach to watch a video like that. Um, but we'll continue moving forward. Um, we'll continue learning and educating and training and working with the community. The Thurston County report said that they're recommending the officers be charged with assault too. Uh, do you agree with that? Is that, is that what you think? It's not my place at this point in this investigation to agree or disagree. Uh, we have two distinct investigations that are going that have to remain separate, a personnel matter and a criminal matter. And the, cr the personnel matter, I, that's you're dealing with your two employees. Correct. The criminal matter, are you in still involved in that case or? Not at all. OK. Um, what is the status of those, those two officers? They are currently out on administrative leave they were placed on administrative leave within hours of the incident occurring. Something that and I haven't, as I said, read through everything yet. How did this go from an arrest to all of a sudden an investigation that you reached out to, to Thurston County? What was, was it a complaint? Was it, the, what, what, how did the dots get connected? Every use of force that comes through the office is documented and reviewed, um, as is the body camera that may go with it, or the camera footage. Um, between that review, the report review, the injuries and extent of injuries, as well as um, a, a contact from the outside, the police department, questioning what was done, all of that came into the decision. And just to prevent any conflict, you, you go to an outside agency, that's standard? Well, I don't know that there's a standard to anything, um, but Yes, for us, two reasons. One, we are a smaller agency. Our resources are somewhat limited. Um, and two is, we want to be as transparent with the community as possible. And so we'll, the best way to do that for us at that time was to go to an agency that we don't work with, we don't have contact with, that doesn't know us, and have them do a complete investigation on it. 
I got this question in with the prosecutor's office. Should the Mason County prosecutor, who is two, three blocks away, should they have the decision on the charging? I mean, would you have liked a Thurston County prosecutor to, to make that decision? or? I'm not an attorney, so that's a legal opinion that, yeah. that only they can answer. Okay. Um, uh, just to, to back up one step, administratively, that's paid, those two officers? Yes. Okay. Does that status change if the prosecutor decides to press charges? The prosecutor's decision is separate from what will happen internally with the personnel decision. Okay. Um, one does not necessarily influence the other. And we will still move forward with our personnel matter, and it may or may not be influenced by what comes out of the prosecutor's office. How long do you expect your investigation, the personnel matter? How much longer? Yeah, I would say in the coming weeks. Coming weeks, okay. And anything from nothing to termination? I mean, is that all, all on the table? There really is no matrix or prescribed for this. Um, it'll be d dependent on what we find during our part of the investigation. Do you see, regardless of what happens with these two officers, do you see a change in policy or a uh, different kind of training? Over the last two years, our officers has been through a gamut of training from crisis intervention to dealing with special needs folks to de-escalation training. We tailor training in law enforcement based on what we learn from different things, and we will do the same here. We will evaluate and look at it and learn from it. Both these officers have been here more than 10 years. They've been through that training. Do you think that video suggests that they did the crisis intervention or the de-escalation? Based on what you're seeing in the video, um, that we take our training from that, but that's not the training that we've done. What do you say to the to the public who will see this? The people of Shelton. Uh, this happened to a homeless guy. No no suggestion that he was aggressive. That that's what came out of that investigation. Um, what do you say to the to the public? I say to the public what I've said from the start. We will be transparent. We're accountable to the public. We're accountable to each other. Um, and as such, we will continue moving forward and be part of this community. Um, within hours of this occurring, we made contact with those individuals and those businesses and those employees that were directly affected by this. So we moved forward immediately and made the contacts out there. And then once the investigation was complete, we had contact from you and we reached out. Anything you want to say to Mr. Heflin? I would just echo what I said to the community. For apology or, I mean? I would say we will continue moving forward and be part of it. Um, and regardless of what happens here, that our direction will not differ from being part of this community and the trust we've built in this community. What is the policy uh, regarding pepper spray and uh, taser? Uh, is there a, I know, I think I got the, the documentation, but I just you have copies yeah, in, of the policy. In, in layman's terms, I guess, are you supposed to use pepper spray if someone doesn't show your hands, which is apparently what one of the officers said routinely happened? It's in a reasonable officer, in a reasonable circumstance, if the officer feels threatened, you're trained to use the tools provided to you. Do you think this off these officers were threatened by this man? I think, like I said earlier, um, the only three people there that could tell you what was in their head is those three people. It's very easy for me to look at this video from the safety of my home, uh, not be out in the elements and know what happens on the streets. Is, is that, and I know that I've heard that concern in, in past events where you see it, just a clip from Facebook Live or something. Uh, is, that, is, that, is there a frustration there because the public doesn't see everything? We're going to show them a cut down version of, of this interaction which obviously doesn't make the officers look good. Uh, and, and you've brought up that when you just look at the video. I mean, do you think there was more at play here or? And that's what the investigation does. That's what a criminal investigation is brought forward for in the personnel part of this. There are certain things in a personnel investigation that we will be able to find differing than the criminal investigation. And that's where we move forward. And again, those words that came up, intentional, reckless, not necessary. You agree with those those terms that were thrown out by the, the other investigators? Like I said, I we have to make a personnel decision based on the facts we have before us. 
Um, so giving words and opinions to that before it's actually done would not be fair to anybody involved. Uh, do you see any changes coming out of this in the future, uh, changing the wording of the policies, uh, additional training? I think just as I explained earlier, we, we base what we do on learning experiences from here or other places. Um, is there a possibility that training may change? Absolutely. Is there a possibility that policies may change? Absolutely. There's always that possibility. But we continue moving forward and being partners within the community. And those those policies and trainings change all the time. I mean, two years ago, you added some new some new wrinkles, and obviously, yes, we're not we're not stuck with the ones that were here long before you. So, I think I think that was it. I mean, anything else you want to add about this? Like I keep saying, is you know, people are going to see this this clip, and they'll be able to play it again, and and you can imagine the comments that are that are going to come out about this. Anything else you want to add about, about this whole thing? I don't think anything can be added today. I think that was it. I had a question about oh, that's buzzing, the, the body cameras. Is that a policy that you guys have had for a while? Is it? I mean, do you think it's a good thing? And I think, you know, oftentimes with the cameras, there's other factors that are going on, and the, the camera is not always. Absolutely, like there is the it, camera. But, but they do have that transparency. I mean, when you guys have them. Is it? Do you think it's a, a good thing that you guys have as a? A tool. I think it's an outstanding thing in today's world. Um, I think everybody's already on camera. Um, and you're right, the camera does not capture everything that occurs. That's why we have to do these complete investigations. But it, Shelton Police Department for years has had in-car cameras. Um, those in-car cameras aged, became older, harder to replace, and are much more expensive than what a body camera would do. And they're limited to just what you see in the car. So it was not a huge transition for us. In fact, it was embraced by the officers that we go to these body camera systems. Um, like I said, we, we've had the in-car cameras for years. This was not a leap to go to body cameras. I, I think you said it, but I missed it. How long have you had the body cameras? Uh, approximately three to four months. Okay, so relatively. And you look at those and review, I mean, you've been able to use incidents to we use the body cameras for evidentiary value. We use the cameras for to get proper statements. We use the cameras to exonerate officers of complaints that come from public. Um, there's a variety of things we can use those cameras for. Do you think we would be here if there wasn't that that body camera? Uh, and not physically King 5, but would this investigation have reached this level without that body camera? Yes. Based on? Based on what we have in place at that department and accountability that we've measures that we've put in place. Force was used, so there's an investigation. There. Absolutely. Follow up questions. Um, you were going to ask about gloves. Yeah, so this glove, I heard it described as carbon fiber riot glove. Is that just when we see the WTO sort of things when there's police in? I mean, I'd love to actually see a glove. I don't know if you've got one of those in a, I in a I closet have somewhere. But, but how would you describe what, what this glove? Um, they're a protection glove. Um, the officers deal with needles on a regular basis. Um, they deal with having to put their hands where people don't want to put their hands. Um, they pick up objects, deal with things like that. And so these are more of a protection for the officers. And uh, one report noted that you're able to hit someone without injuring yourself. I mean, they're, they're protective in all in all, in all aspects. Yeah. Right. And is that standard to have those on on a call like this? It's not unusual at all for an officer to put on gloves when he approaches a call. Not against any kind of policy or no, anything sir. like that. Um, how do you refer to the gloves? I mean, do As a protective just glove. protective glove. Um, and I'm just going through my notes here. Uh, the knife that was seen, was that one of the officer's knives? Or was that found in that bedroll? Do you know... I don't have it in front of me, I saw that but photo. there was officer's equipment that was knocked off of their utility vests, okay. um, and I don't have the investigation sitting in front of me to give you exactly right. that. And I don't know if anyone in the room has read all through those, but I saw the knife, but I also saw somewhere in paperwork that the knife belonged to him, and the way it was written, it looked like him was the officer. And I, I guess what I'm saying is Mr. Heflin, there was no, never any weapon found on him. I think that was that was the point that I was just trying to make sure I was clear on. I don't know on that right yeah. now. And I can, I'll read through that. I just, that was something that I thought you might know off the top. Um, I think that was it.